Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and attending this video presentation. I think you'll find today's case quite interesting. It's going to involve a lady with endometriosis that precluded her from getting pregnant after having been pregnant spontaneously once before and thereafter um, precluded her from being successful with IVF because she had an immunologic problem associated with the endometriosis. Before we get started, let me just welcome you to Share Fertility Solutions. I ask you to please, if you're interested in having a consultation with me via Skype online for an hour and thereupon receiving a detailed report on the consultation along with advice on how to proceed for the future with a roadmap, um, please call Patty Converse. Patty Converse, she is my concierge lady and can be reached by email by phone or email, by phone if you live in the continental United States or Canada, you can use an 800 number 780-800-780-7437. If you reside outside Canada or the United States, dial 702-533-2691 and that'll get her. Alternatively, if you want to, you can uh, go to our website, uh, shareivf.com shervf.com where you'll find an enrollment an invitation to book a Skype consultation and when you go there you'll get the enrollment form which will tell you exactly what to do to access Patty. Be sure when you access Patty either by phone by email that you leave your cell phone number so she can call you back or your contact number whichever is best and she will send you a questionnaire which I urge you, urge you to fill out completely if you can and send back to her with available, readily accessible medical records. Don't worry if there's some you can't access. We can always get them later. But you should fill in the questionnaire as detailed as possible because you'll get much more out of your consultation with me if you do so. Very soon, we're going to have that questionnaire on the website itself and you can actually fill it out online and send it directly that way to Patty. Okay. So let's get going. Again, the story is about Rosa, who was 35, and her husband Jim, 42, both are fictitious names, to protect their right to privacy and anonymity. The couple had achieved a spontaneous pregnancy in 2014, after four years of trying unsuccessfully. The pregnancy uh, miscarried, and she had the uterus cleaned out by DNC. Thereafter, she went ahead and did a, a hysterosalpingogram and a saline ultrasound to see if her uterine cavity was regular and normal and whether her fallopian tubes were open. Both came back normal. Then in 2016, Rosa went through a laparoscopy to see what was going on in her pelvis because she had certain symptoms that were highly suggestive of underlying endometriosis, namely heavy bleeding, pain with intercourse with deep penetration, and pain during ovulation. And um, she went through this, and the laparoscopy showed her to have stage 2 endometriosis. There were deposits all over the pelvis. All these endometriotic deposits were ablated. She went on to do IVF, which was the right thing to do, but it wasn't it was the right thing, but not completely evaluated because a third of women with endometriosis also have an immunologic implantation dysfunction, abbreviated to IID, where the, woman's, where the woman produces increased amounts of activated toxic natural killer cells. The natural killer cells form 80% of all the immune cells in the uterus. Ordinarily, they play a vital role. They release certain growth factors called cytokines in a balanced fashion that attract the roots of the embryo into the uterus and facilitate formation of the placenta, which is the lifeline for the baby. But in a third of women with endometriosis, these natural killer cells become toxic and activated. And if they're toxic, they release a toxin or one type of cytokine that's toxic. Uh, it's called Th1 cytokines, 
The two most important are TNF-alpha and interferon gamma. And these cytokines attack the roots of the embryo and damage or destroy it. If they destroy it, the woman will lose the pregnancy before she knew she's pregnant. She'll think she's infertile, but she's really having a mini miscarriage. Or it'll weaken the root system of the embryo by destroying the cells that are burrowing into the wall and the embryo will limp along and then miscarry. And so it was that they never got tested and they didn't realize that she actually had activated natural killer cells as well as antiphospholipid antibodies which are present in a large percentage of women with endometriosis regardless of its severity. They did IVF a number of times. Um, she has normal ovarian reserve with a normal AMH, so she produced 20 follicles, 16 mature eggs, and all were fertilized. They produced seven good quality blastocysts. Two of these were transferred fresh to her uterus, and she did conceive, but she miscarried. So she contacted me to find out why she'd had all this trouble conceiving before and why she miscarried this time round. And she has five advanced good quality blastocysts left over and frozen and stored for her subsequent use. That's when I told her that we needed to do the immune testing that I mentioned. And these tests can only be done adequately in about one in four, uh, in one of four, um, reproductive Immunology Reference Laboratories in the United States. The one I recommend highly is in Boston, Massachusetts. It's called ReproSource, R-E-P-R-O-S-O-U-R-C-E. -E. I use them almost exclusively. ReproSource uh, needed to receive her blood to test her for natural killer cell activation and for phospholipid antibodies, and this was done, and she tested positive. So now we knew why she had not gotten pregnant for so long early on with the endometriosis. And we also knew why when she did get pregnant on both occasions, on her own with her husband and then with IVF, she had lost the pregnancy as an early miscarriage. Now I want to point out that there's another reason, another uh, cause of activated natural killer cell production in the uterine lining in women uh, who have miscarriage, repeated miscarriages, and that is called alloimmune, and it is not the case, it's not caused by the same mechanism, the autoimmune mechanism that occurs with endometriosis. Here it's because the woman and her husband share certain genetic similarities involving the gene DQ alpha HLA, and when this, when there's a match, then it's hard for the embryo to attach because the matching embryo, when it gets to the uterus, evokes activation of natural killer cells. And when these natural killer cells are activated, they destroy or damage the embryo in the same way as occurs with autoimmune implantation dysfunction. Only the alloimmune one is harder to treat. I'm not going to go into that now. But for those of you interested in learning more, go to my website, go, into the, go to the home page again, shareivf.com, click on the invitation to book an appointment to speak with me and you will find that there's also the ability reaching that site to download free of charge a copy of my new book on immunology that I posted there which explains all these immunologic factors and there's also information on endometriosis as well as case reports. So that's the case of this couple. I'm pretty confident that they will be successful in these embryo with these embryos once the problem with the immunologic problem is addressed appropriately. And I've so advised them. Thank you very much for attending this video presentation. I hope you found it to be of interest. And I promise you that as I get more information on the outcome in these cases, I'll post them for your uh, uh, information and interest. Have a wonderful day.